open up? Okay, so this is the Intel Home Energy Monitor Proof of Concept. And what we have is um, several different screens here that sh you can monitor all of your energy in your home. So first of all, you can turn it on with the slip of switch or off. So that would shut your entire home down if you were going on vacation or if you were just going out for the day. And you turn it back on and I can do many things that I can do on a PC, but in more of a tablet form factor. And this can actually uh, mount on your wall in your home or on a stand. And so what you have here is, um, so I can monitor my household profile, so I can see what exactly is going on in my home. My energy bill. Uh, of course, this is gonna act temperamental because I turned it off. I have to reboot it, I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's fine. Um, and I mean, I see here that it's running, it's got an Intel Atom processor. What, which uh, chip is this? Um, this is running on the four, on the Menlo platform. Okay. Which I don't know the SKU number on. Yes. Yeah, hard to keep them all straight. Yeah, 4500. And what's what kind of touchscreens technology is this? On um, this is Windows. Is it Windows CE or Windows 7 running behind the scenes? Is it, is, okay. <laughs> You guys are not supposed to be so technical on me. Okay, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's based on Microsoft software. It's based on Microsoft software. And then the front and end. And it's a proof of concept. It's not mm. something that's available. What we're trying to do here is show utility providers and um, consumer good makers what is possible with Intel technology for the energy field. And what the big difference is there are smart meters out there today, but the difference with this is it, it puts the um, energy consumption and monitoring in the hands of the consumer versus the utility. So a lot of the smart meters, um, the utility is controlling your usage and when you do things. With this device, you're in control of all of that, which is a nice feature. Be booted up here in one second. And uh, just because I'm still rolling here, yeah. you know, also what we have here at the booth is the uh, reference design for a um, this is for canoe, canoe lake. 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 Right. So this Dual is the core Adam. <laughs> oh, sorry, were you raising one before me? Yep. Uh, this is our, our reference design for it's called Canoe Lake. Uh, a dual core, it's based on dual core Atom. We expect to see OEMs adopt this design in early 2011. It's uh, really thin and light. It's 14 millimeters when it's closed. Now, to be fair, this is a thick pen, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a credit card out, right? right? And so, this is a reference design that was shown off um, at Computex, a Computex actually, this summer, mm -hmm. but now you're saying that early next year we will actually see at least one, we maybe will more. See it available for consumers to purchase. Right. And so, that's a reference design. Is, is this home automation uh, controller, is this also the same sort of reference design where somebody else might license We're it? We're calling and use it a proof, it, of concept, proof of concept, not a reference design, but okay. it's the, basically the recipe for how you can go out and build one. Okay. Um, you know, we're also looking at what else Intel has here to show off, the uh, Lenovo IdeaPad S10 3T, which is a convertible tablet, which we've seen before, um, Sony uh, Vio W, um, the latest uh, Acer netbook with a dual core, I think this is the uh, D255, AOD255 with the dual core processor, yeah. and a couple of tablets here, including the Open Peak, which um, is coming to market eventually, and has yeah. is running Google Android, and has... Q1. Uh, an Intel Atom N450. No, you said no, that was more, the, more, that's more sound. It's a Z something. Um, here we've also got the um, uh, XOPC, and in exactly the same hardware design is the Wii Tab, which is a German tablet uh, running Mego Linux, and I believe there's actually a compatibility layer on there that lets it run some Android applications as well. Um, it's the first time I've seen this one, so uh, I'll come back to it in a second. But it looks like are we running here? Yep. We're okay. Running. Okay, so just give me one second. Okay, so this is my devices. So basically, it can monitor through sensor technology all of the different electrical devices that you have in your home, and it also can um, connect to the internet, so it can act as you know a, an appliance in your in your kitchen. So if I want to monitor my my average billing and what I'm paying and I can set goals for myself on how much I want to spend a month in electricity and how I'm doing on that and then I can re, um, rework my energy usage so I may decide that I want to run my washing machine at different times in the day versus um, at peak times. I can go in and look at my household profile and I can see everything that's going on, my account number, what my average bill is, who to call and I can set that up for all of my different things. Um, if I wanted to do a video memo, so if I wanted to leave a note for my husband um, when I was going out, I can have a little video in there, record it, and then leave it for him so we can have like a, uh, messages back and forth to one another. The features are really unlimited on this. You can also go into App Store, and so you could purchase different apps for it.
Um, so you could have, you know, your happy pets, your community share, you know, these are all just kind of fake apps. Um, and then current consumption, you go in and you see kind of what you're using. And then what's really interesting is you go into your home network. Okay. Oh, crap. And this is a proof of concept, which and is why it's being a little concept. funny. Yeah, yeah, and I just turned it off. Okay. okay, so if I look at my dryer, let me look at my shower. Right, I can see exactly how much of my bill is being due to this. So one of our engineers actually had this in her home, and she was actually deciding if she should use a solar, buy a solar hot water heater or not. And so she was able to kind of break down all the usage of all the different devices in her home and decide that that solar hot water heater was actually the most expensive device in, or the hot electric hot water heater was the most expensive thing in her home. So she switched and went to solar. And she lives in Arizona, so her air conditioning was actually cheaper than her hot water. So. Okay. Well, th Sorry thanks. about that. That was a little bit choppy. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. And like I said, I'm just going to do a little quick uh, look here at the WeTab running Vigo. Um, so it's an 11.6 inch, 1366 by 768 pixel display. Uh, it's got a sort of custom version of Migo here where you can see all the different applications coming up, uh, sort of widgets and, and whatnot. Um, do we know if the internet's working on it or not? It's uh, being a little spotty, but it should work. Okay. So, you know, we've got... Uh, so you can scroll up and down by using the side here. And this is one of the nice things, I guess, about having a widescreen display and a high-resolution display is there's plenty of room for content in the middle while using this side to uh, control applications and web pages and other things. So it's pretty much 15% of my total bill. I would have thought that shower would use that much, right? So 